going to Tennessee with a visit. She's going to come with us. So, excuse me, I got to sneeze. Uh, that's awesome. I actually um, judged a couple of times the in Collingwood, Canada, the uh, Elvis. Um, they had a big. They have a big event there every summer. They did for probably fifteen years, but. My cousin and I, and most of the Jordanaires were living then, so we were the judges of, it was in the Guinness Book of World Records of over 92 Elvis tribute artists, and we were the grand marshals of the parade, and there were 80,000 people on the sides of the streets, and I've got this beautiful plaque that they gave me from the city of Collingwood, and um, anyway, it was an awesome memory of how many people love oh Elvis. she does well when the covid first started um her daughter lives in north carolina so i took her some groceries and she's just the sweetest lady and i wasn't sure if i found the house and oh there's elvis written on her <laughs> vehicle i'm like this is the house <laughs> so she, she's Trust the best me, I've, I've met a lot of them that's for sure over these years yes and i go at christmas for the lighting at graceland that we um um they did the last two years, uh, like Christmas at Graceland with Hallmark, and they had, had the Christmas lighting, and then they showed in the, um, uh, they have a new sound stage, so they allowed us to see the movie there. So I enjoyed that, and now they have a, a um, hotel that looks like Graceland that is larger. I think there's over 300 rooms there, and they have an auditorium that seats almost 500 people. Oh. So I, I was a, um, shared the story of how I received Elvis's award there in Studio City at the Sportsman mm -hmm. Arena that we did for Elvis's con contributions uh, to the westerns and the film, western films. And so Jerry Schilling, which was one of Elvis's closest friends, and I received that award. And you saw it, right, Brian? I, I brought it. Yeah, uh, you, you saw yeah. that award. You, you let me hold it and everything. Yeah, yeah we have an Taylor interview with it. There. <laughs> Before I took right. it to Graceland, yeah, it's in their one of their showcases now. Yeah, we took it back and gave it to them. Yeah, it was an honor. All right, I'm going to start this. All right, so here okay. we go. Part two, Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more with co hosts Katarina Gazayas, Sherry Nelson, Jessica Heim, and the one and only spokeswoman, media personality, my southern mom, experienced social media influencers with one million. 20,000 views and 763,000 views. Never knew I was going to get a million views. With my, with, with Edie Hand, I had no idea that was going to happen out of Tennessee, out of all places. But also, you know, we were talking a little bit, a little bit about um, acknowledges of things with Jerry Schilling, um, Adam from APM Music. We have to talk about those people um, because they all play a big, huge influence of the, all the things that you've been creating, Edie, which is good. And also talk about the award that you were up for here in um, Alabama that was recognized for. Yes, I, that was quite an honor. I, I, was, I was glad to receive, there were top 25 women in our state that were the most influential in the media world over the, the past um, decades. And this was their very first event. So I told them that I was glad that someone knocking on the door of 70 was glad to, to get up and think that, that they could, I, a senior could be an influence and they all got a big kick out of it. But what I said, how, how come I believe that I was picked was because I talked about how people change my life. And that was what um, people might say thank you to someone, but it was individuals that changed my life that allowed me to become this senior um, media influencer is because that that was so true of it, to recognize the different people at different seasons of my life and we need to do that we have to recognize who helps us become who we are that makes the difference in life Hey, Edie, I don't think we'd be having all this about no kindness to people. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, because it's love, you know, it's, it's about love. I, I mean, I, even when we talked about in the last show of the pearls of hope is I even create like when I, I belong to a church up in there over 30 years is um, in a women's group within the church. And there's, 
probably about used to be like 50 to 100 of us women from all walks of life um, and now it's it's about 25 of us and about 10 of us have known each other for almost 30 years either college professors mine in the entertainment world advertising and others into um, attorneys and what it is is that what we all found out that we shared was these healthy relationships and love a love for our fellow man and so i created scriptures to go with the different colors of pearls and so when i speak at a church i share those what those bible verses are and they have come to mean a lot to me and they were bible verses that my grandmother alice had put in my bible and i didn't really know what i was going to do to use those and i was actually looking that up i thought did i put that in my phone uh of what my grandmother did and and i did and uh she taught me how to mop with my pearls on and what she would say was if you she had a huge kitchen you can imagine you had 12 grand 12 children 12 55 grandchildren 18 great great if people came you had to have a big kitchen <laughs> if you had everybody but she said sometime in life you will be thrust a mop in your hand and you have to know that if you've got your pearls on and you're dainty, you got to know how to pick that mop up girl and mop with your pearls on. You got to keep your shoulders back. You got to have your confidence and you got to know who you are. Cause sometimes in life you're going to fall in an old mud hole and you're going to have to get up and wash it off. And, you know, learning all these little bits of wisdom from her, so that's how I started with that. But I looked at that. Um, I don't know. Can I say something of scripture on this? <laughs> yeah, yes, ahead. please. Uh, okay. Um, I, this started about with uh, the white pearls. You see if I can see it here. Yes. In 1 John 1 through 19, it says to confess our sins. He is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins all we have to do he will cleanse us if we ask him to forgive no matter what it is isn't that beautiful and that's what she said it didn't matter what you do if you believe it and you speak it is the late great buddy killen who was an incredible legendary music publisher in nashville tennessee and my friend and published elvis's heartbreak to hotel he would say it shall be did and that was what we would do things and he would say it shall be did Edie Mae so you see my prayer.com right there that's in Malibu California um then the yellow pearls are about stains and in our lives we have stains um maybe it's a divorce maybe it's abuse of some level and it says that I found in my grandmother's scriptures was 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature and the old passes away and behold, there is new. Mm -hmm. And that's what I meant about how things can just, in that real in your mind, if you change the real, you gotta keep moving forward you do not have to live in the past, but in the present and the future, because it's gone. If we ask it and we believe it, and if the demons try to bring it back in your head, you say, get away from me. I've got my sword out and I'm going to slay you down, baby. I mean, that's what you do. And then for your pink pearls, for fun, in Psalms 44, 15, happy are the people that believe in the lord and that is so true whatever your religion is i mean you know whatever you believe if you're enlightened if you're this or that i think it is what your connection is with the universe mm -hmm. of what allows you to find your own freedom and there's the others i'll say is this of silver pearls would be um james 1 5 and if you lack wisdom all you have to do is seek it. And I have found a great, in, in Proverbs 7 through 19, I believe, if you want wisdom, you read that. 
and it will give you wisdom. And in the black pearls that I told you, in telling that story, if you wanted to hear of the last ride of my brothers, David, Terry, and Philip Blackburn, to tell the Blackburn boys' story of how much I love them. And as Terry was dying, I held him in my arms and I took him back to burnout in this little place where we grew up, riding those horses and going to the river and telling him about all the fun things we did as kids. And I told him we'd come to the river. And this time I could not go all the way with him across the river, but that he would, his horse would fly away and I would remain until I met them again. I remember the hospice nurse said, wow, I have never seen anything like mist fill the room. And it, as I lay him down and went out the door, I felt the touch of three sets of unseen hands. And I knew the boys were together and the horses were running wild in the pasture because they knew. Thing, unexplained events, unexplained situations. All we can do, guys, is keep looking for something that brings us that ultimate peace. And I have found that through the scriptures that my grandmother left me, and she didn't even know why she was leaving them, or maybe she did. But for me, she left me her pearls. So when I'm down, I put those pearls on and I feel a different energy. And I tell you, one of the other things is, is in knowing about a gold pearl is staying strong and steadfast in who we are. And I know as a multiple cancer survivor that I have, and I, st I have battled chronic illness my entire adult life and losing my right kidney uh, having breast cancer, uterine, and bladder, is that I know this. All these multiple things only made me stronger and more compassionate for my fellow man. And it doesn't matter what you have or geographically where you come from. What matters is who you are inside. Like I said in the last uh, events that we were talking about, is our character is all we have to leave behind. So I say to you, in these pearls of hope have helped me to write these 25 plus books and now to be telling my last legacy is these global women of true grit i think through fedex and telling these ultimate stories of rides through life because my story there's pieces of my story that is each one of your stories and i think that's what god wanted me to do with my last days. Edie, this time last year, um, and Katarina, it's funny because uh, we got our glasses. So Katarina, tell your story when you opened your glass and then Edie has her glass. So I'm sharing Edie with all the stuff. Katarina, talk about the story <laughs> we opened our glass this time last year. Absolutely. So first of all, well, Edie, thank you for that. I almost want to make a hashtag called mop with your pearls. Um, you know, because like it, it's so true. We will go into the valleys, we will go into the dark, we will go into the negative, And it's just that slight shift in uh, awareness of the dialogue that is running internally within us, that can absolutely move us. And as you mentioned, in your case, you're reading scripture. Um, what I love that you talked about, and, and Brian, you know, I think you'll appreciate this as well. Um, as a Buddhist, it's irrelevant, you know, what you believe, it's that you believe. Yeah. And whether that's yeah. Muhammad, whether that's, you know, Ram Dass, whatever your, you know, your go-to, maybe it's your higher self. Um, and talking about higher selves and those glasses, this is where Brian wanted me to go. And this is a funny story. So in Nashville last year, when I had the privilege of meeting Edie at the Women of Southern, uh, Film, and Southern Women of Film and Television, SWIFT conference, we were gifting many of you with these custom glasses that if you put them both up again, have our faces on them. So Brian's there, <laughs> Edie's is there, and I was lucky enough to have one as well. 
and I cherished it. It looked just like me, a little bit fuller here, which I like. <laughs> I know they had the bus going on there. Yeah. yeah, they had the bus there. And I, I had mine out one day, and my cleaning lady put it into the dishwasher. We pulled it out, and I had melted down. And I thought, oh no. <laughs> Because they're just so fun. So I'm glad that you're still, you still have yours, Edie. I and big shout out to it in my china cabinet and I get it out for special toast. It looks just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Got my teal glasses on there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's part of what we're doing is either if you're, you're writing, you're producing, um, it, is, it is branding. I mean, our whole lives, uh, what we wear and what we do, we are marketing something. We may not know it, but we are. Um, life is is always selling in one way or another. Absolutely. And the glasses, uh, Cindy Wade, uh, CindyWade.com was fortunate enough to make them. Kathy Lee Gifford has one. I still have to give that one to you. And then um, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, was it Jennifer? What's Jennifer's last name again? Jennifer O'Neill. Jennifer O'Neill. Jennifer O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she loved it. Yeah. So, yes. I so, and for those that might not just immediately think of her name, is that she actually played opposite in Rio Lobo uh, with the, John, the late, great John Wayne. And she was the um, face for CoverGirl for, I don't know, 30 plus years. But she left. Hollywood and came to Nashville, Tennessee and has a farm, then she does a lot for uh, veterans um, that struggle, you know, with their emotions and uh, she does a lot of good things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do is with our voices that if we're uh, blessed enough to give them in, on different levels, we can use that to make a difference for different charities. So good. Are you going to say something? You know, um, uh, I, was, I was just going to say that, you know, um, I think it's really important, Edie, that you were talking about marketing. And especially right now in this environment that we're living in, you know, somebody like Jessica um, and Sherry as well, but, but Jessica for sure, who's an actress and, you know, um, very ingrained in the entertainment side of things and wanting to move in that direction. Um, you know, how do you market yourself at a time? What would your advice be? How do you market yourself at a time when going and physically walking into a studio doesn't exist anymore? You know, does it just go back to being human to human? Well, Th this is my, obviously I have a son in the entertainment world in California and um, they're shut down and not um, doing their thing. But he also is an opening act for Jimmy Kimmel Live. And even though Jimmy and the, the three other talk shows are doing their thing is how they are staying afloat is because they had built those relationships with people. They stay in touch with one another by email or, you know, mainly, or they can text each other. But they want to know what's going on and when is their park going to key up again and how are they taking care of them financially until they can still be there so people can still stay afloat. And when you're with a large enough group, you're being taken care of. So, but if you're not being taken care of and um, you have to find a way to market yourself is you should go back to those strong relationships you had. Don't wait on somebody to come to you. You go to them. Yep. You let them know what you're doing. You stay active. If you're a writer, you be writing. You be looking at ways you can create. If you are an actress, uh, work on some different monologues, the different styles you like. And we're all, we learn every day something if we allow ourselves. So I say stay active in what you do so that you, same way working on our bodies. Look, my old body, I have to crank it up every day and I am down in my exercise room and I'm thinking, good grief, I'm gonna have to knock myself around to get this body back looking a little firmer. All the things that go with our craft, if it's standing and speaking in front of somebody, if it's writing, it doesn't matter, it's your time. 
And if you don't make use of your time, if we sit in a corner and feel sorry for ourselves, and believe you me, I have my pity parties too, but I have to get myself up, self-talk every day. Every day you self-talk to yourself. And you never know who you're, by reaching out to someone, being on these Zoom calls. I mean, I've been on a lot of them in the last few months. And I can tell you this, same way with my prayer group. Every Sunday morning, my Bible study, we're on Zoom. If they don't know I need something, how can they pray for me? Or how can they help me network to business? So you got to take the initiative for yourself. And I was saying that to my friend he mentioned earlier with Adam uh, Taylor. And, and he is the president CEO of APM Music. And he, I said, how is the business? Globally, because I mean, they have an office in California and um, Nashville and uh, New York and in London. And you think about it. And he said, you know, we've only lost probably 10% of our business because our team stays in touch. We may not be in the office. We're going to open it up for just a few people. But mainly all of us are going to work from home to be safe the rest of this year. So think about it. How in the world there might be a window for you to perform or to be able, because these agencies that are small, medium agencies, they're having to do it all because they've had to let their folks go because they couldn't afford to pay them unless they got some supplemental income. How can you help those help yourself? Call your agent. Say, what can I do for you? to help me. So you got to reach out and let people know you're willing to do whatever it takes. Because here I have written a book at my age in the middle of a pandemic and it's coming out the end of all. And that was not because I was sitting over here resting on my laurels. It was because I built those healthy relationships and I reached out and the people that I was reaching out to believed in me. You can do this. You'll find some way to keep afloat. Same way with Brian. If he's going to do um, calls and different things, how can his clients get a benefit from allowing him to do certain things? It's positioning. It's marketing. You, we have to position what we're doing and who we are if we want to grow with it. That's what you take a brand. You show them how it works for you. So you, you do those things for yourself, and I promise you, somebody will take notice that you got a lot of grit girl mm. so good yeah so great and Evie I was I was gonna ask you talking about your fitness routine and you know being like oh, I gotta work out today what does it come to decision making for food because I know <laughs> that you did cooking you did cooking shows um are you okay this is about three different questions I'll, I'll into one um initially do you you were doing TV things and interviewing people. What was your first on-screen TV gig? Was it a cooking show? Did it is that how it all started, or did you do something else and then it kind of morphed into cooking? I'm very curious because I saw some clips of you doing various cooking shows. Then piggyback off of that um, with your health and um, everybody's bodies react differently to different foods and there's allergies. What do you do? Or what's been your kind of normal routine and making sure that you're maintaining the, the right food intake and uh, what's your favorite food to make? Yeah, that's, like that's question. a lot of questions, girl, but let's see. Uh, I can I'm tell so you. I'm so curious. <laughs> I, uh, I started um, in radio in college. My okay. college professor liked my voice. And he said, how many jobs are you working, girl? I told him I was working at the village shop selling purses on the weekend. And I was writing for the Florala on campus. And, um, you know, I did odd and in jobs to either or to write people's papers. And he said, you can quit one of your jobs and come to work with me at the radio station. Da, da, da. That's how I learned how to write, produce to market, um, which helped me a lot in my economics classes. Uh, then when I graduated from college, of course, I moved to Birmingham because I had planned to move to New York. I wanted to be an actress and uh, I did land a role. I did do the soaps in my younger years on As the World Turns. I did a small role. But what I found was I was good at acting 
uh, in these commercials and I knew that mm, this makes money you know and how you could take and so it was a team of us there was three guys and myself and Link's father did the selling and so we created a company called the Hot Spots so from that, we did these cornball characters. Beverly Hillbillies was big then. And so I was like an Ellie Mae clamp and I had this real long blonde hair, had a cute little body then. And uh, it was about discipline myself to work out. But Link's father was a very much a health nut. So he encouraged me, would encourage me to go to the gym and work out and get a routine going. I fluctuate. I wish I was as disciplined as my son. He looks like a, he's got this perfect body. Listen, he's got an eight pack and I just try to keep a two. So I'm just saying that I am, I do the best I can. <laughs> I could do better. I say the best I can. So I'm saying I have taken all of that knowledge then. I wrote a book called Recipes for Life. And the late great Buddy Killen and I did our first national Christmas special in 1999 and we were donating the funds to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital because I'm dear friends with Terry Thomas who is my son's godmother which is Danny Thomas of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital's middle daughter and so therefore uh, we created recipes from that book and worked with from here in Birmingham Alabama Southern Living which is based here so we put together um, a series of recipes and Unilever Best Foods took notice of me on national television and they invited me to, flew me to New Jersey. And out of 100 women, I was selected. I was, they called me, I was their Donna Shore of the South. <laughs> so they sent me on a 10 city tour and I was making buttermilk biscuits and chocolate gravy and beer battered shrimp in New Orleans to, on Bourbon Street to, you know, uh, all kinds of things all around the country. Um, so we triggered doing shows of, I was on a national syndicated radio show, and then I was doing television bits on CBS, which led to that, and, and I had my own uh, kitchen set. Now look, I'm a good old Southern cook. I am not a chef, but I, I really worked with a lot of great chefs that made me look good. So I knew how to surround myself with people to make me look better and were smarter than me. That was my key. <laughs> always have people with you that are smarter and better than you okay and you that's treat them and let you shine huh <laughs> i said that's what brian's doing <laughs> they, they, they do they do so i've done so i did a cajun creole cookbook uh, with a um colonel paul who was a chef from new orleans and i did the country music christmas cookbook over top 60 country stars and at that time, they would come by Buddy Killen's office on Music Row. I mean, I have laughed my head off at some of the recipes. I said, y'all must have been drunk doing this because this isn't going to work. But anyway, there, there would be, you know, we would, we would uh, as we say in the South, turn a, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. So we would make it into something good, okay? Um, and I uh, had a group of chefs from Viking, the Viking products, again with Brandy that would test all the recipes. So I would go to Buckhead in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, a guy named Keto McKenna at that time was my champion. And he said every night people would leave the bars in Buckhead and go, what kind of food are you cooking? <laughs> He'd say, you're gonna have to buy this girl's cookbook because they're her recipes <laughs> and her stars. And so anyway, we had a huge crowd when we did that book signing of a country music. Group. So that's, now, what I do for myself, I have a dear friend, Christy Swade, that is the head of Heal Alabama. It's called healunited.org, if you want to see about some great recipes. Um, her husband is a neurosurgeon, and they started helping me because I wanted to lean out about 30 pounds to get back to where I was healthier with my heart for at my age. So... You know, that's so that's my mission now over these next few months is I'm, I'm leaning out the right way. So I know what to take in the morning. I'm doing it slow and right. For Mother's Day, she shipped me a stamina bike to put in my exercise room so I could measure the blood pressure, the heart rate, and it's low. So I didn't, 
listen, I used to be a rah-rah cheerleader in high school and college, and I could throw those legs up. Now I can barely bend them, so I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> so she got, I got that low bicycle going on there. But I have that, my treadmill. My son taught me how to do exercise on a large ball, exercise ball, mm -hmm. and how to get on a Pilates seat and stretch my legs since I didn't have those machines you could stretch, you know, at, at the gym. So I have basic things and weights to try to tone up these arms. And I'm and now not that I'm going to be a muscle woman or anything, but I'm going to be a toned woman entering her 70s, you know, and I'm going to feel good about myself. And that's my goal. In these next couple of months, I'm going to try to have the rest of the 20 pounds on off. I'm started. I got 10. I'm going down. So I'm working at it. And I'm drinking a gallon of water a day. And I found out that if I took my vitamins at night before I went to bed, it didn't, didn't mess up my tummy. And then I, I knew that if I found the system with what I took for my health, because I, st I live with chronic illness and we're always battling cancer. I mean, cancer, as my oncologist said, is going to get me probably if my heart don't first. And I said, well, if they're in a race, I'm older than them and I'm going to beat them. So we're just hanging in there till the deal is over. So I'm letting you know that I'm doing what I can with that. And I'm trying to eat more fruits that I get fresh, uh, blueberries, strawberries. Um, and I eat yogurt probably every other day. Um, and I try to get the plain yogurt so that the fruit is my sweetener, natural. Uh, drinking the water. I have a few nuts. Um, I don't eat as much meat as I used to. I'm eating less of that. And I, I just try to monitor my intake and uh, eat more often and exercise and if I need an apple. So that's what I do. Is that, did I answer all the questions? I think so, except <laughs> what is your favorite meal to make? My favorite the, meal? Yes. Oh, okay. To make. If you, had to, if you had to go in the kitchen and I was telling Brian the other day, you know, really good meal ends up, um, someone can say that you put the chicken in it. Like, like that, it's just that good. The go-to <laughs> meal. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> I love uh, grilled chicken. I love asparagus and I love a good salad, you know, so that's pretty much my basic of what I would do. And I just have a, a regular garden salad mm -hmm. uh, because I live in the South. Uh, if I don't have tomatoes, I can find somebody with a garden that's got them where I can go to the farmer's market. Um, go next door. Yeah. Someone's got so them. They went in their backyard. That, that is what I, and I love watermelon, you know, and if I can have a fresh watermelon, I love, I love watermelon for dessert. Yeah. That's my go-to. Awesome. Well, Edie, we got Very about good. two minutes. So Jessica's got this, I, I mean, uh, Sherry's got this idea of wanting to take a road trip, maybe after Swift in October to Graceland and then um, to Dollywood. Well, now there's a journey. Um, <laughs> if she, since she doesn't know geographically where she's going. <laughs> well, I'm well aware. I, I was trying to explain it to Brian. It's the whole state and it's a long one. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but Tennessee is so magical. There's so many things to see and do. I was looking at, at all the um, attractions that you could see so it, you know there's a wealth of fun in that state I'd well like if you try you, with you i think of they course. may have swift <laughs> this year in my neck of the woods in birmingham i think they're looking at having their event here i, I will see i'm on their board so I, i'll see but they had talked to a group of us about it but here there's so many wonderful things but you could go either way from here you would be anywhere from two and a half to three hours to Memphis, Tennessee, two and a half to three hours to Dollywood, but they're in the opposite direction. Um, and, but to me, I would want to go, you know, if you want to go for rides and fun, you go to Dollywood, but if you want to go to touch history, you go to Memphis, to Graceland. And to me, it's, it's so beautiful now with what they've done to bring up all the, um, they've added on to Graceland where you have like three museums you can go into, all the neat little restaurants. It's not in the most ideal location anymore because as life changes, but they have it set up great for Graceland. They have 
the house. You can stay right next door in something that, you know, like I said, three times its size. They have the auditorium. They have rock and roll every night in the lobby. They have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> uh, or fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches at 11 o'clock at night. They got stuff rocking and rolling and fun. And then if it's, of course, in October, that's, I don't know what they'll have now with all this that's going on, but in December, they have their Christmas lighting event. But you definitely would enjoy going there. And then it would be great to have a tour of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Mm -hmm. One of my passions is helping uh, the kids with cancer there. And they do allow tours. And it would be a tour you would never forget. These little children are going around in wagons with IVs in their head and their arms. And they are smiling because they are treated with love. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I have had the privilege to help raise millions of dollars and it's one of so many large corporations. And then they have one of the most beautiful botanical gardens there where you can have, you know, dine there. So that would be a fun place to go if you wanted to see several things in one trip. Now, if you want to, I've been to Dollywood. Now that, that is an all day wear your buns out and go to all those fun little rides and do, and that might be something you, you know, you want to do, but that would be take another whole trip over there. But definitely, I would suggest Graceland would be fun to do. Well, we we're out of time. We're going to do it. We're going to set it all up. What I think is we're going to go to Alabama with your town uh, and then work it away from there some kind of way. We're working on it, Edie, so I'll let you know. So well, and if that works out and if you come at a time where I can do that, I'll see if I can't help get y'all a good tour and do that with you. Yes. That'd be the best, Yay. the only way. <laughs> I used to spend the night there when I was the young girl. I know all about that house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so with that, all right, so with the great Edie Hand, thank you so much for the time and giving us a part one, part two, with Katarina Gazayas, with Jessica Heim, with Sherry Nelson. This is Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more, the worldwide TV network, women on TV, TV and I247 out of Franklin, Tennessee. And if you see someone at a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. Thank you. All right, that's it. And we got like six seconds, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs>